Hello internet, welcome back to It Builds Character, my character building D&D 5e show. Sorry that we started a little bit late and there was no one last week. I was hoping to have pre-recorded an episode to publish for you guys uh, so that we wouldn't have missed it. But this show will continue every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern is the plan. The show is going to run for about a half an hour to an hour, depending on how long it takes to actually build the character. Um, spellcasters are obviously going to take longer than your martial characters. It's just the nature of the way things go. Um, so, uh, Also, as mentioned last time, I will be taking uh, viewer suggestions for characters to build. This could be anything from an existing character of another franchise or something that you'd like me to attempt to build in 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons, or just a build that you've wanted to make yourself that you are unsure of, or a concept, or something of that nature. For instance, episode 1, we did Trevor Belmont from Castlevania, the Netflix series. Uh, and today, thanks to uh, DJ Pine, I'm going to guess is how you say it. DJ, I know you've been in the chat a bunch, but uh, his suggestion was a pole arm wielding bugbear. That's a fairly loose statement and gives me a lot of room to play with. The reason you want to build a pole arm wielding bugbear, pole arm gives you 10 foot reach, bugbear gives you an additional 5 foot reach, so now you have 15 foot reach with your attacks. So he gave me free range to choose what to pick. Typically for a pole arm wielder, you're going to want to go with something like a fighter just to get the extra feats you're going to need to make up for the, you know, you want Polar Master and you want Sentinel. Um, but we'll see what I can do here today. Uh, but you can also suggest other characters, and I haven't built it yet, but I'm going to be building a spreadsheet that will list all of the subsequent builds because you guys came out in droves on the last video and suggested a whole bunch of options. So... Right now, next week is going to be Tuxedo Mask from Sailor Moon, and I believe the following week is Hellboy, and then I have a long list of other ones to build after that. So we'll see what happens. Um, okay, let me just make sure my little tweets and things went out to social media. Uh, it, they did. All right, so let us get further into building this character. So I tried to do a little bit ahead of time to get stuff out of the way. Um... So we decided that it's going to be a bugbear, and it's going to be, I decided that it's going to wield a polearm, which I guess we can put the polearm here, because they all pretty much do the same thing, so polearm. Uh, and I said last time we're going to use standard array stats, because that way it's fair. Even, I could have done point by as well, which probably would have been a better build for this class, but I decided to stick with standard array to keep things consistent. So here's what we've got. We have our 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, 8. Uh, I decided that I wanted to build a paladin. So uh, we have to have a good charisma for our paladin spells, but more importantly, our auras. Uh, and then 14 strength, 12 dex, 13 con, 8 intelligence, 10 wisdom. We would like to have the stats be a little bit better, but it is what it is. So... What else do we have that we're going to go over? Uh, we have the Player's Handbook for our base Paladin information here. We have Volo's Guide to Monsters for our Bugbear stats right here. And we have the Unearthed Arcana that I'm going to use to choose uh, what type of Paladin we're going to be. Because I wanted to try a little something different. So, let us move on. Uh, oh, I guess that's my little spiel that I've been giving every stream. Um... If you guys would like to enter our contest, uh, I'll throw it up here in the chat if you're curious. Um, that is the link to uh, our donation site, but also the link to our giveaway we have currently. We're giving away an Elderwood Academy spellbook and some cards from Crit Games. There may be a third prize added, potentially Saturday, so we'll see how that goes, so keep an eye out. Uh, if you've entered already, there's daily entries. If you subscribe to us here on Twitch, you can get other entries that way as well. Um, so I'll put that out there. That ends Monday the 31st at midnight that night, so 11.59.59 on the 31st. Uh, if you'd like to enter, uh, we have a donation bar on the screen. You don't have to donate. That's to get all the players in all of our streams a roll on the legendary magic item table. This is only going to be around for the month of July, so just a little, little something. So, alright, let's jump in here. What do we got? Uh, 
Let's start with racial features because we're obviously gonna those aren't gonna change. So what do bugbears get? Plus two strength, plus one dexterity. So this is gonna go to sixteen. And this is gonna go to a thirteen. That's an eleven. That's 113. Alright, 13. What else do we get for being a bugbear? We have a 30 foot land speed, we already did that. Uh, we have dark vision. So here we go, dark vision, 60 feet. We have the bugbear, we have long limbed. So that is our additional 5 foot of reach. So, uh, long limbed. We have melee attacks have five foot more reach okay we have sneaky uh i didn't fill that in but it's proficiency in stealth i already clicked that so we're good there we have a uh, powerful build um so powerful build and that is double carrying capacity and then we have uh, surprise attack. Uh, surprise attack. Bonus 2d6 damage to surprised creatures. All right? If you surprise a creature and hit it, extra 2d6 damage uh, on the first round of combat. Yep. And then common and goblin as languages. So common, goblin. Okay, well, let's see. Are we getting getting some retweets here? Hopefully you guys will start showing up so I'm not doing this all by myself. But hey, I'll do that if I have to. Um, all right, so that is everything from our racial stuff. We'll come back because at the end of this we do have... Yeah, why don't we just do that right now? Uh, so bugbear starts at six feet, base two hundred and pounds. Uh, height modifier two d twelve. All right, I grabbed the old school three point five D and D die roller. So we're gonna go two d twelve seventeen. All right. So what did we say? Uh, so that's an extra seventeen inches. So seven foot five. So, oops, we are height, seven foot, five inches, and then we have that 2d12, and we're going to, so 17, let's get our calculator out here, 17, where am I, 17 times 2d6, all right, so 2d6, roll, 10. Oh, so 170. Nice and easy. So, 370 pounds. There we go, and that is it. Alright, so that's taken care of. Um, Alright, so we're pretty much done with Volo's Guide at the moment. We don't really need that for anything else, but we'll move it to the end here. Let's jump over to Paladin. So what do we get at level 1? I decided, because we're going to need feats to make this really work, that we're gonna go with uh, probably level 12. Get you three feats uh, and some ability and score improvements because we're gonna need them here. So, all right, so we're gonna go Paladin. This is another reason why you'd potentially wanna go Fighter or if you roll for stats and you roll well. We're gonna say his background is a soldier. I'll explain that in a little bit. And the alignment's probably gonna be chaotic neutral, if not chaotic evil. So, uh, let's see, we're going to have uh, Lay on Hands, Divine Sense, we'll leave those alone, uh, this is Action to Sense, Celestial Fiends, and Undead, within 60 feet, uh, how many uses? Right now it's one plus your charisma modifier, so that's four. Uh, no, I'm sorry, that's three times per long rest. Lay on hands is five points per level, so we've got 60 points for lay on hands. 
And we will have spells, oops, in just a little bit here. So. Well, let's see, let's move on. Fighting style. Okay. It's a little bit of a tricky situation for the fighting style because we don't have, uh, what's it called, we don't have, uh, we're not going to be able to use a shield unless we have an animated shield, so we're going to be less on our armor class, but we're going to choose a great weapon fighting, so that's reroll ones and twos on damage dice. This is not as useful with a pole arm because you're rolling a d10, but a one on a d10 sucks, so. And that may change in just a sec, so we'll keep that. We also get our Divine Smite, which is uh, on hit, roll, or add 1d8 plus 1d8 uh, Radiant. Uh, run d8 per level of spell. Uh, radiant damage. Max is 5d8. Okay. So that's that. Divine Smite. We have Divine Health. Well, I should probably go back and do some skill proficiencies too. So that's immune to disease. Okay, well let's, you know what, we got a little bit ahead of ourselves. Let's pick our uh, proficient, oh we're proficient, we got wisdom and charisma saving throws. So we'll check those. At level 12 our proficiency bonus is going to be a 4, we'll come back to that. And we're going to get athletics, insight, intimidation, medicine, Persuasion religion. We are a bugbear, so I'm going to go with athletics and intimidation. And then we are a uh, soldier. Oops, not sailor. Soldier. So we're going to get athletics and intimidation, so we're going to get two of any uh, skills. So we're going to obviously choose perception because it's the best skill in the game. And. Hmm. I don't take our bugbear as much of the persuasive type. Insight might be useful, but I'm gonna say we're gonna go with survival. So, uh, we have everything up to level three for the most part. Let's just figure out the rest of our ability scores. I'm gonna keep that strength at 16 and I'll tell you why in a little bit. Uh, so at level four, we're gonna get one stat boost. So we're gonna boost our charisma to a 16, our constitution to a 14. So that's two, that's three, zero, minus one, that's one, and that is three. So that is for level, uh, we're gonna put down here, we'll put ability score improvements, and we'll say plus one charisma, plus one plus So, what else do we have? Uh, we have spellcasting abilities. So we have Paladin as our spellcasting class. Spellcasting ability is Charisma. At level 12, our save DC is going to be 8. Plus 4 is 12. Plus our is a 15. 8 plus 3 plus 4, yeah. Uh, three and four, seven. Yeah, that's it. So then uh, we don't have any really spell attacks, but if we did, they would be seven, and we get domain spells. So we're gonna be oops, we're gonna be using the uh, Oath of Conquest, the updated Oath of Conquest Paladin, the one contained in one of the, more, the revised class options uh, on Arth Arcana. And I thought the tenants really speak to this bugbear. He's going to be a paladin of Hergrek here, which is the chief deity of bugbears, god of violence in combat. Um, so I feel like that fits pretty well for this bugbear character. And the Oath of Conquest, douse the flame of hope, rule with an iron fist, strength above all. Very bugbearian 
Uh, so what are our oath? Uh, here's our abilities. Our oath spells we get are armor of Agathis and command. So we've got uh, armor of Agathis. That's a domain. We have command. That's a domain. We will come back to get uh, our actual spells. We'll choose those at the end. What else do we get at level 3? Our channel divinity abilities. We have conquering presence and guided strike. So, uh, channel divinity. Uh, I spelled disease correctly. Channel divinity is conquering presence. Conquering presence. And that gives us what? Uh, you exude a terrifying presence. As an action, you force each creature of your choice within 30 feet to make a wisdom save. On a fail, it becomes frightened for one minute. Um, so. Action. Frighten creatures of their choice within 30 feet. Wisdom save or frighten for one minute. Uh, oops. Save at end of turn. And the other option was guided strike. Okay, so this is going to be good for our guy. Guided strike. This is basically just like the war cleric ability. Um, uh, use channel divinity to add plus 10. Yes, DJ, thank you for being, for being here. So it's not just me alone by myself because that's what it's been for the past 21 minutes. Although some of that was, I wasn't actually live. So, uh, guided strike. Uh, let's add some little brackets here so we don't get lost here. Go back and add these in. Okay. Channel Divinity Guided Strike. That's okay. Don't worry. I'm... Where's everybody else? That's what I want to know. Um... To add plus 10 to your roll before DM says uh, hit slash miss. Okay, so that's our level 3 abilities. We already did our level 4 ability score improvement. It was the plus 1, uh, plus 1 con, plus 1 charisma. Uh, level 5, we get extra attack. And we get our second level spells. So let's see, so we have, at this point we have four and two, and our domain spells are hold person and spiritual weapon. Domain. Domain. Uh, did we miss anything else? Oh, uh... I guess we forgot to add this. Uh, gaming set. Vehicles land. Uh, do we have anything else? Um, you know what? I guess we should go back and add in the stuff that we have. Just to, just to round everything out. We've got our 10 gold. We have... Trophy, cards, clothes, clothes, trophy, cards or dice, rank insignia, and then let's fill out our actually our personality traits here. So we are a soldier. Um, uh, we're gonna go with I enjoy being strong and I like breaking things. I enjoy being strong and I like breaking things and then our second trait is uh, what's the, what are the memories of war 
I can stare down a hellhound without flinching. Stare down a hellhound without flinching. Okay, our ideal is in life as in war, the stronger force wins. This fits very well with our paladin idea. In life as in war, the stronger force wins. Bond. Uh, Mother of Faith, crushing defeat. Someone saved my life on the battlefield. Those who fight. Uh, I. F mm, this is really tricky. I'll never forget the crushing defeat my company suffered or the enemies who dealt it. Let's see, can I just copy this? Will this work? Alright, yeah, so we'll go with that. That one works. And then lastly, our flaw. Uh, my hatred of my enemies is blind and unreasoning. Uh, okay. So now we have our, our character traits and everything out of the way there. I want to put the player name right here. There we go. Uh, so, we did level 5. What do we got after that? We have level... Let's jump back to Paladin here. Level 6. Alright, we've got our Aura of Protection. This is big. Aura of Protection. Saves to uh, draw modifier to saving throws to allies within 10 feet. Okay, so we're going to add three to all of our saving throws. So our charisma save right now is a 10, wisdom is a 7. Uh, let's see. Uh, we've got a two, then we've got for con, we've got a five, for dex we have a four, and for strength we have a six. So there's our charis there's our saving throw bonuses, I guess we can fill the rest of these out to two, zero, uh, negative one, seven, three, Negative one, oh, zero. Intimidation is seven. Investigation minus one. Again, if you roll for stats, DJ, and you do better, you'll you'll be in a much better situation than I am using point by. Uh, four, three, three, minus one, uh, one. Uh, five, four, and our passive perception is a 14. Okay, there we go. And we're going to have 12 d10, 12 hit die. Uh, and I guess we can figure out our HP, assuming we don't add anything crazy. So we've got d10 hit die, we're level 11, 11 times 8, it's 88. Plus level 1 is 10 plus 12. Alright, I'm gonna do that right. 100. Oh man. Alright, yeah, so 100 HP. And our initiative bonus is a 1. And probably we'll have plate armor, but we'll come back to that. So. Aura Protection. That was our level 6 ability. Now we have our Oath feature from level 7. And we're using this. So we've got Aura of Conquest. Uh, so, Aura of Conquest. And that gives us what? Uh, that's, okay, that's a 10 foot aura. 10 foot aura. And what does it do? 
creature is frightened of you, its speed is zero, and that creature takes psychic damage equal to half your paladin level at the start of its turns. Okay. If a creature is frightened of you. Uh, its speed is zero within the aura, and it takes psychic damage equal to half your charm modifier. I think I wrote that down right. So, uh, if you take psychic damage equal to half your- oh, I'm sorry, half your paladin level. To half your paladin level. That is much better. Uh, 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 if it starts its turn there. If it starts its turn there. Okay. So, that's that. Uh, and then at 18th level, the ore goes to 30 feet. Okay, no big deal. Then we have now third level spells. Or no, I'm sorry, we have three, three second level spells. All right, then at eight, we're going to get another ability score. And for this ability score, because we are a polearm wielding class, we're going to take the thing you absolutely need to take, which is the polearm master feat. So, sorry about the dogs, guys. So we're going to go for here. Pole arm master feet. So what does that get us? Uh, when you take an attack action with a glaive, halberd, or quarterstaff. Okay, so we'll go when attacking, when using... The attack action with polearm. I'm oh, sorry about the dog. Polearm. Make a bonus action attack. Uh, where am I? Uh, attack with opposite end. Dealing 1d4 plus strength modifier damage. So, the main reason we're taking the Polar Master feat. Hey, AJ, how you doing? Um So, the reason we're taking the Polar Master feat is again, it's one of the best feats uh, for anybody if you're deciding to go this build, but if you think about that, you have two attacks, attack 1, attack 2, and then you can flip it around and strike with the butt end of the polearm as a bonus action. So that's three action or three attacks. Normally, it's not so great because it's a D4 plus your strength modifier. But you got to remember the character that we're building is a paladin. That's a, just a third chance, a third potential strike to crit. And you can still smite on the butt end attack. As long as you hit with a melee attack, you can smite. So this is just a third option for your smites. So that's the way I'm thinking about this. That's why I chose to go that way. Um, Paladin over fighter. But that's not all we get. Uh, while you're wielding, uh, creatures provoke attacks of opportunity um, when they uh, enter your reach. Uh, so creatures provoke attacks of opportunity when they enter your reach. Remember, as a bugbear wielding a polearm, our reach is 15 feet. So if any enemy creature comes within 15 feet of you, you can hit them with an opportunity attack. The only negative side of this is that means if a creature gets within 15 feet of you, they can circle around you within 15 feet without, being, without provoking attacks. So that kind of... It's uh, commonly referred to... Uh, you know, as the donut of invulnerability, where if you have a larger than five foot reach, you can move anywhere within that space without provoking attacks. We've got a 15 foot reach. If you think about on a battlefield, a 15 foot, so three squares all around you, 
your enemy can circle in that. Granted, you can still hit them on your turn, but they can circle around and avoid you in that way without being hit by opportunity attacks, potentially taking out your allies, but still not provoking attacks of opportunity. Again, you get to hit them when they enter in that 15 foot range. The only negative side of the 15 foot reach for the polearm is your paladin aura of conquest is only a 10 foot aura again that changes at 18 if you go 18 levels in paladin uh your aura will go out to 30 feet so that's a big benefit but at it's a 10 foot aura and your striking distance is 15 feet and the reason i say this is your channel divinity at level three you can take an action to frighten creatures of your choice within 30 feet and if they uh if they fail they're frightened for a minute but then if they're within 10 feet of you, their speed becomes zero. Your reach is far enough to hit them. So they're 10 foot away from you. They're frightened. They have zero movement speed, so they can't move. You can still hit them, no problem, because you have the reach. And if they're within that 10 foot reach, they take psychic damage at the start of their turn, uh, equal to half your paladin level. Again, their speed is zero, so they will automatically be, t if they're frightened of you, that is, they're going to automatically start their turn within 10 feet of you because if they're frightened, their speed is now zero, so they can't move away from you. So they'll have to take that damage at the start of their turn where they can make the save. Sentinel is next on the list, believe me. that's We haven't hit level 12 yet. That's why we're going to 12 so we can get it. But uh, they're frightened for a minute. So if they even get fail the first save and they're within 10 feet of you, their speed is zero they are now going to take the psychic damage at the start of their turn and they can try to save against the fear at the end of their turn so at the very least they're going to start their turn in your aura to take half of your paladin level in psychic damage at least twice again potentially being too far away from you to hit you but you can still hit them that's why i picked this build i think it combos very well and absolutely will be taking sentinel once we hit level 12. so we just hit level 8 to get us to this point. So we're gonna go up to level nine now. What do we get at level nine? We'll jump back to Paladin. Uh, we're in Fighter here, oops. Too far. Rogue. Oh, Ranger. So. One more. Here we go. Level 9. We get our proficiency bonus would go up, but we already took care of that. And our we get our third level spells. So, 3, and this is now 2. And we get our domain spells, which are Bestow Curse and Fear. Bestow Curse, which is a domain spell. And Fear. Again... Fear being a super good option for you when you can, if you hit people with fear. Granted, fear makes people run away from you, but if they're afraid of you, their speed becomes zero, so they can't get away. They're terrified of you, they're still frightened of you, having disadvantage on attack rolls against you, not willingly being able to move towards you because they're frightened, but they also now have a zero speed movement speed, so they can't move away from you. So it's a really good way to lock people down. That's why I really like where, you know, as I started to think up this build, I really like where it's going. Okay, so that's level 9. We get our extra spells. Level 10, how fitting for us that at level 10, we have the aura of, what is it called? Courage. Aura of Courage. We're immune to fear. Uh, immune to fear and allies within 10 feet also immune so not only are we a master of terror as this hulking bugbear figure who we rolled earlier is seven foot five and 370 pounds uh we are also not uh affected by fear at all so then even better because we're polearm wielder it's not as good we get improved divine smite at level 11 what does that mean for us that means every melee attack deals an extra 1d8 radiant damage remember what we talked about earlier from polearm master the butt end of the polearm does an extra does a d4 plus strength well now we have our polearm which does a d10 plus our strength 
So each time we hit with our polearm, it does a D10 plus a D8 plus our strength modifier. We have two attacks, and then our bonus action attack with the butt now does a D4 plus a D8 plus our strength modifier. And we could do that every turn. That's not including spending spell slots for smiting. Not including potential extra damage we could do with Aura of Conquest being up as well. Uh, and again, if worse comes to worse and we don't want to use Conquering Presence as an action and we absolutely need to hit, we could use our Channel Divinity to do Guided Strike to add 10 to our roll to ensure we get that hit. Pretty solid options. Okay, let's move on. Lastly, we're going to hit level 12 is going to be as high as we're going to go with this build which is going to get us a last ability score improvement. And that is going to be, of course, as you put earlier, DJ, the Sentinel feat. And why are we doing Sentinel? This is renowned as one of the best option, uh, combo feat options in the game. It was, I think, it, I think if I recall correctly, this was by design. It was to, there's not really chaining feats like we had in previous editions. There's a couple, like, meaning that you need to have proficiency in heavy armor to get heavy armor master and things of that nature. But we're taking Sentinel. So, what do we get from Sentinel? Uh, we get... When you hit a creature with an opportunity attack, their movement speed becomes zero. Why is that so good for us? Because of Polar Master and our Bugbear Reach, when a creature comes within 15 feet of us, 15 feet, mind you, we get to make, they enter our range, we get to make an opportunity attack against them. Okay. But if we hit them with that, then our movement speed becomes zero. How do we ensure we hit them with that? We use our Guided Strike Channel Divinity to add 10 to our roll and stop them dead in their tracks. But Sentinel does more than just that. Uh, creatures within five feet of you provoke attacks of opportunity even when they disengage. So these guys are trying to get away from us to disengage. Doesn't matter for us. We still get opportunity attacks. Um, still get opportunity attacks even if enemy within five feet uses disengage action uh worth mentioning though is that uh creatures within five feet of you provoke attacks of opportunity from you even if you they take the dis uh, disengage action before leaving your reach um the problem with that being is because we have a 15 foot reach uh that doesn't work we have a 15 foot reach creatures within five feet of you because normally an opportunity attack happens when you're within five feet and they move, try to disengage. They pro provoke attacks of opportunity. Uh, so unfortunately, it doesn't work for that because our reach is 15 feet. And while, yes, um, actually, let me reread that. Creatures within five feet of you provoke attacks of opportunity even if they take the disengage action. So, okay, let me rephrase. They still, you still get the opportunity attack on them if they're within five feet when they take disengage. But because your range is 15, if they're 10 or 15 feet away from you and take disengage, then you don't get the opportunity attack. That's my, my mistake. But if they activate, if they move in all the way up to you and then disengage from you, you still get the attack when they, if they leave, if they go more than 15 feet away from you, uh, provoking your attacks of opportunity. But if they're 10 or 15 feet away and you're donut of invulnerability, then they don't, they can still disengage away. And then when a creature within five feet of you makes an attack against a target other than you, uh, you can use your reaction to make a melee attack against that attacking creature. So a little bit of ally defense. So when a creature within five feet of you attacks a, attacks a target other than you, attacks a target other than you, you can make a melee attack against them as a reaction. So that's potentially another way to get another attack out there, which could potentially be another crit, which is another option for you to use your channel divinity. Um, 
Okay. So, this got our our bugbear here to level 12. So, what are we saying? He's a level 12 character. He has plate mail. We know that. Not a big deal. So, that's why he's got 18 AC. Um, what else is he going to have? Uh, well, I'm going to say because he's a level 12 character, this guy's probably got some magic weapons. I'm going to... Or magic items of some kind. So, here under treasure, I'm going to give him... Uh, Gauntlets of Ogre Power. Um, he may have something better. You may roll stats and be better. But we're going to say Gauntlets of Ogre Power to give him a 19 strength to bump up this to a 4. To bump his strength saving throws up to an 8. Uh, and then that'll make his attack. E and at by level 12, you should have a magic weapon. So we're going to give him a plus 1 Glaive. We'll just make sure that Glaive works with Polar Master because one of them is left out. How uh, Pike is left out for whatever reason. So we're gonna say plus one Glaive. This is probably a little reserved unless you're in a very low magic campaign. But with eight and a plus one Glaive, his bonus to attack is nine. It's going to do one d ten plus one. Oops, one d ten plus one d eight plus five points of damage. And again, don't forget he can re-roll ones and twos uh, because he has the great weapon fighting style. So if he rolls a one or two, unfortunately it only functions on the weapon damage itself, so only the d10. If you chose to take the defensive fighting style and add a plus one to your AC while wearing armor, that's not a bad call, but the, the really the, the comes down to what's the difference between 18 and 19 AC, how big of a difference is that going to make for you in the end? Um, I'm not going to go too nuts on the magic items that this guy should have by this point. Uh, the only thing we got to do now is come up with uh, his other spells. So these are the spell options that we have uh, for our domain. We are a paladin with a 16 charisma, so that's a 3 modifier, which means we can do half of our paladin, prepare half of our paladin level plus our charisma mod, so that's 9 spells. So what spells are we going to prepare? Well, first of all, we're Paladin, we have Lay on Hands, but we should probably take Cure Wounds. It's not an unreasonable spell to take. You're not necessarily going to use it at all. You may be using your spells for Smites, but uh, let's jump ahead to the Paladin spell list. And then uh, we'll take a look. So, Paladin spells. Level 1. Uh, we have command automatically as a domain. Bless is a fantastic spell. Bless is better safe for your cleric to use, in my mind. Uh, we are going to take Compel Duel. Uh, it only, it's not a, a great spell, but I feel like it fits this character too much to not take it. This battle-worn conquest paladin. Uh, Detect Magic, also a great option. Probably reserved for somebody who can ritual cast. Uh, we are immune to fear at this point, so heroism really loses its luster. Protection from good and evil is a great spell, but it's situational. Uh, and then you have your smiting spells. You may want to take Shield of Faith. It's a bonus action to get you a plus two AC. It lasts for ten minutes, but that's your concentration slot. Do you really want to use it for that? Uh, I typically recommend Thunderous Smite or Wrathful Smite or both. I believe... Actually, let's just look up on my phone. Wrathful Smite may be the way to go for you as this paladin. While I take a look, because if I recall... Let's, let's, let's go... Uh, okay, Wrathful Smite. Attacks do an extra d6 psychic damage, but the creature must make a wisdom saving throw or be frightened of you for up to a minute. Obviously, we are the king of fear, and we get so much bonuses for being for frightening creatures. We want Wrathful Smite. So, uh, what did I say? Did we say there's anything else worth adding? We're going to add... I'll put Thunderous Smite on here. And I'll put Wrathful Smite. But Wrathful Smite is the one we're really going to want. Unfortunately, Wrathful Smite doesn't upcast at all. Um, but they do get a save. Uh, as an action, a creature can make... Ow! Hold on. Hold on. Let's talk about this. So, it's a bonus action to activate this spell. Then it lasts for up to a minute. The next time you hit with this, you deal an extra d6 psychic damage. Not a ton of... And, and, you know, your smites are doing more damage at this point. 
but if the creature fails the wisdom saving throw, they're frightened until the spell ends. However, to try and end the spell, they need to use an action to make a wisdom check to against your spell save DC to break it. What that means is, one, they're going to use their action up to try to break this, and then they have to make a wisdom check, which means it's just a d20 roll plus their wisdom modifier. They don't get to add their proficiency bonus. Wisdom check against your spell save DC. Unfortunately, our guys is only a 15. That's because we didn't have, we used point by, we didn't have a ton of uh, charisma. But even still, a wisdom check or stay frightened of you for up to a minute, which again, as we remind you, if they're within 10 feet of you, their speed is now zero. And if they start their turn within that aura, they're going to take half of your paladin level and psychic damage while you can freely hit them from a distance. So Wrathful Smite is good. Thunder Smite is extra damage. It is 2d6 thunder damage, and I believe Thunder Smite can also be upcast to do additional damage. Also a bonus action spell. Uh, it oh No, it can't be upcast, but it is 2d6 thunder damage. Uh, if the target fails the uh, strength saving throw, they're pushed 10 feet away from you and knocked prone. Again, for you as a bugbear, pushing them 10 feet away and knocking them prone means nothing because you can still hit them. Um... And then you'd be swinging at advantage because they're prone. Uh, so what are we going to get at our as our second level paladin spells? <sighs> We're obviously taking fine steed because you'd be dumb not to take fine steed. It's a free ally in combat, and depending on the DM, they may let you take something a little bit more powerful. Uh, the general rule that I've played with in all of my home games. Uh, is anything of a challenge rating one or less is allowed. That is by f uh, that is completely a homebrew rule. Uh, I have played in other campaigns, even in the Adventurers League, where people let me have a challenge rating two creature. I've also heard crazy stuff in Adventure League play, mind you. Somebody having a challenge rating five steed, uh, a woolly a mammoth, a woolly mammoth steed. I think it's dumb, that's a little too much if you ask me, but if your DM will allow it, go for broke. As far as second level spells as a paladin goes, Lesser Restoration is good, but most of the things you can cure with Lesser Restoration you can cure with your Lay on Hands ability. Uh, magic Weapon can be useful if you don't have a Magic Weapon up until the point where you get one. We're saying that our guy's got a plus one Glaive, so it kind of ignores that. Uh, and I personally like Zone of Truth. Uh, if you have a cleric around, though, they may be better to cast it. So we'll see what we have left. We can only prepare nine spells, and we've already prepared one, two, three, four, five. Let's look at our third level spells. Well, we're a paladin. Uh, Aura of Vitality is by far the best healing spell for non-combat situations. So even though we're more of a fear guy, I'm still going to give us this because it's not a bad heal uh, over time. Blinding Smite, okay. Create food and water, again, situational but useful. Crusader's Mantle, pretty good. It's allies within 30 feet, deal an extra D4 radiant damage on all of their melee attack rolls, I believe. This is what I'm going from for my many times playing as a Paladin. Uh, until the spell ends, the aura moves with you centered on you. Each non-hostile creature in the area, including you, deals an extra D4 radiant damage when it hits with a weapon attack. Definitely not bad. It's concentration for up to a minute. You potentially have other uses for your concentration, and it is an action to cast. Um, and it also doesn't upscale. So I do like it, but I'm going to say probably go against it. Daylight, great spell. Uh, again, situational usage. I'm going to go with Dispel Magic, because Dispel Magic is never a bad thing to have. And then uh, Elemental Weapon, again, if you don't have a magic weapon by the time you have this, you could potentially use that. And then I'm going to go with Revivify because early level uh, Revivification uh, and, and Resurrection spells are never bad things. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then I'm going to go here and I'm going to just throw on Zone of Truth. So those are our nine spells that we have paired as a paladin. We gave ourselves gauntleters, <laughs> gauntlets of ogre power, and a plus one glaive. We took plus one charisma, plus one constitution, polearm master feet, the sentinel feet, and we are using, uh, we have all of our abilities here. 
Uh, again, if you get the drop on a creature, because you are surprise attack as a, you get an extra 2d6 damage to surprised creatures. Not a bad thing. We're saying we've just got regular old plate mail. You may have Mithril, Adamantine, plus one, plus two, types armor of resistance. Could put you in a better spot. Uh, I mean, other things that I would do as far as higher level spells, if you were to get to the higher levels, Death Ward and Banishment are solid options. And then eventually, if you can get all the way up, uh, Destructive Smite, uh, Destructive Wave. It says Destructive Smite. This is the Gen 1 uh, player's handbook was Destructive Smite, but it's actually Destructive Wave. Uh, and Dispel Good and Evil, also good, because if you hit, you can potentially banish a creature, and uh, you can give yourself a plus 10 to the roll because you are a... Uh, what's it called? A... Uh, Conquest Paladin. So you have that... Basically the War Priest ability. Um, let's just take a look at what other things. We'll give you some feedback on what to do going forward. So if I was this guy going forward at level 16, I'd probably boost my Charisma because it's going to boost my Spell Save DC. It's also going to give me a plus one to every single one of my saving throws, which is never bad. Um, what else do we have? Cleansing Touch is ending a spell on you is good. Um, you get your ability score improvement. We'll go over the oath features in just a sec. Uh, at 18, which is big, your auras go out to 30 feet, so you add a plus, uh, plus your charisma modifier to all allies within, th uh, to their saving throws within 30 feet. And now, if a creature is frightened of you and within 30 feet of you, its movement speed becomes zero. And if a creature starts its turn within 30 feet of you, it takes half your paladin level in damage. And then your Sacred Oath feature, the maximum one, up at level 20. So let's see what we have. So, uh, let's see. Uh, the only trick that could be hard to understand here is, if that creature is frightened of you, its speed becomes zero while in the aura, and that creature takes psychic damage equal to half your paladin level. The way I'm reading it is they have to be frightened to take the psychic damage. Um, you could potentially try to argue that if they just start within your aura, they take the damage. That's up to you. Then at a 13th level, our fourth level domain spells are Dominate Beast and Stone Skin. And lastly, our 17th level domain spells are Cloud Kill and Dominate Person. Uh, Cloud Kill seems a little random, but it's good damage, you know, if I recall. Cloud Kill, I think, does. Or maybe I'm thinking of Incendiary Cloud. Uh, cloud Kill. 20 foot radius. Oh no, it's poison damage. Creature enters a spell area for the first time or starts this turn there. Make a con save. We take 5d8 poison damage. Um, so, you know, it's some AoE, which is a paladin you're usually severely lacking in. Dominate Beast and Dominate Person is a quick way to turn a battle one way or another. And Stone Skin is a, is a solid defense, uh, especially if you only have an 18 AC. You're going to potentially take a few hits, and that gives you... Resistance to non-magical piercing, slashing, and bludgeoning damage, although it is concentration and is an action to cast. But you also can cast it on somebody else. Our 15th level ability is Scornful Rebuke. Whenever a creature hits you with an attack, that creature takes psychic damage equal to your charisma modifier if you're not incapacitated. So not only are you dealing all these fear effects out to people, keeping people trapped, dealing psychic damage, hitting them from a mile away, stopping them dead in their tracks doing three attacks around with an extra d8 from improved divine smite if they manage to get through all of that and hit you they take uh potentially up to five uh psychic damage just for hitting you and you don't have to use your reaction that just happens and then lastly your capstone paladin ability for the oath of conquest invincible conqueror for one minute as an action you activate and become an avatar of conquest and for a minute you gain the following benefits you have resistance to all damage. When you take the attack action on your turn, you can now make one additional attack, and your melee attacks crit on a 19 or 20. Again, Polar Master, 15 feet away. You're now making three attacks plus a bonus action attack. Each of those three attacks do a d10 plus a d8. Your bonus action does a d4 plus a d8. And now you crit on a 19 or 20, and you have the potential to use those crits to uh, add smite damage, which... As a reminder, as a paladin, you can use your smites after you use them after you hit. So there's no missing of a smite. So you could potentially save all of your smites for when you roll a crit, and then double all the smite damage plus all the major the base dice damage. So 
Uh, yeah, I don't think I missed anything that I had planned for this build, guys. Uh, DJ, this was your idea. I hope this suffices. I don't know if you had planned to play a paladin, um, but this is my idea for what a bugbear paladin build would be. Um... So, again, everybody thinks fighter because the extra feat could potentially get you a bonus and you can get access to Polar Master and Sentinel earlier on than you normally would be able to. Um, which I don't disagree with, uh, but I think it's better to... I, I think just the damage potential and the character concept-wise, I like the Paladin better. Especially, like I said, if you're rolling for stats and you roll well... Some of the stuff that I had to do, you can mitigate. You might not need Gauntlets of Ogre Power. If you roll in a 16 on your roll, you'll start with an 18 strength, and Gauntlets of Ogre powers are, are useless to you. Uh, you know, you might roll better Charisma, uh, and then you don't need to worry so much, and you have better boosts for your saves and things like that. So, you know, there's, like I said, there's options depending on where you go with that. So, um... I hope, DJ, since you're here in the chat, I hope you enjoyed it. Sounds like you did. Um, I'm going to put this out there to everybody else that may be watching on YouTube or Twitch after the fact. Uh, this is my show that happens on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. It's about a half an hour. This one got started a little bit late, so we're closer to about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, I build characters here on the Internet with your guys' suggestions. Uh, I'm going to be putting up a list shortly of the suggestions I've received so far. Um, I've gotten a whole bunch. Next week's build is Tuxedo Mask from Sailor Moon, followed by Hellboy, and then, like, Darth Vader, and a whole list of things that people have suggested. You don't just have to suggest existing characters for me to try to replicate in D&D. You can do what DJ did and suggest a build concept, like a polearm-wielding bugbear, and then I can build that. Um, or, you know, something like that. If I start running out of, uh suggestions i'll st i have other things that i have on deck as just in cases so we'll see how that goes um but yeah this is my my attempt at building this like i said to build this class you'll need the player's handbook you'll need volo's guide to monster for your bugbear traits and you'll need to be used to have approval to use the uh revised class options on our tharkana and using the Paladin Oath of Conquest. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I'm going to... I, I meant to do it with Trevor, and I may still go back and do it. When this gets posted up on the Nerd Immersion website, there'll be a link to the video, and below it, I'm going to try to post the character sheets as well, so you can go and actually see what I did uh, and check back, you know, to see... to you know, to compare it to what you want to do, and that way, if you want to reference things, you can see what I did. Um... So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, uh, just my last little spiel I did it at the beginning. Um, it's July, it's Magic Item Month here on the channel. Uh, August 31st at 11.59.59, our giveaway of an Elderwood Academy spellbook ends. Um, you guys can enter that, or second place prize is a set of crit uh, condition dice and combat dice, or con condition cards and combat cards from crit games. Uh, and I believe Saturday or Friday night I'll be adding a third prize to that list. Uh, there's all manner. It's not. It's free to enter, and it's open to international folks. Um, all you got to do is follow on a couple social medias. It's completely free. Uh, and then there's a slew of other options to follow. If you decide to subscribe to our Twitch, that's ten bonus entries. Um, that's pretty much it. There's a, if you guys want to donate to alter the course of the streams, you have a few days left. You can donate when we're not streaming. If you so choose, you just have to let me know what the donations are for if you're donating to alter the course of the game. If we somehow manage to hit $400 uh, by the time the stream ends, every character in all the games gets a roll on the legendary magic item table. So we'll see what happens. Um, but I just wanted to throw out the thank you to everybody uh, who came out to support this show, who suggested stuff for this, uh, and everybody who helped us break 600, almost 700 uh, followers on Twitch and over 2,000 subscribers on YouTube. Your support and thanks and praise on all these things, and even your constructive criticism and your not constructive criticism, either way, it sparks interest, it sparks dialogue between us and you guys, and uh, that just helps me want to keep making these videos and keep doing these things. So, again, I greatly appreciate it. 
Uh, join us here next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time to see my build on It Builds character of Tuxedo Mask from Sailor Moon, suggested by Laura, a.k.a. When in Rome, a.k.a. Odella from our Horde of the Dragon Queen campaign. Hope you guys have a wonderful night, and if I don't see you beforehand, have a great weekend, and I'll see you next time. Good night, everybody.